Today's devotional is for Christians out there who are constantly feeling guilty for enjoying wholesome, innocent pleasures. Now, my name is Jamie Ecker. Most of you who are watching this probably know me already, but I share biblical content for Christians who are struggling with OCD, anxiety, and very sensitive consciences, okay? So today's devotional is for you if you identify as someone with a very sensitive heart and a sensitive conscience, okay? present company included. Many times people that have religious OCD and sort of that the scruples in life, it can be extremely, extremely difficult for us to just let go, relax, enjoy good things. I hear lots of stories in our, in our weekly support groups, stories of people who have just felt so guilty having a cookie or they go on an amazing beach vacation and then they just can't enjoy themselves. Or, I mean, just like any good thing. Like one guy was sharing that he he didn't feel that it was okay for him to buy nice clothes for himself. So he was always buying old clothes at thrift stores that didn't have a whole lot of life left in them. And one day he decided to just challenge his fears and bite the bullet and he bought a new shirt that was I think $6. And oh boy, he just felt so guilty about having a $6 brand new shirt. And it was just really hard for him to enjoy the fact that, you know, God had given him funds to, to use in reasonable ways. I think that the difficulty in enjoying ourselves and enjoying good things from God is definitely one of the symptoms of religious OCD that I hear about very often. And I wanted to share just a few really simple thoughts from the Bible about enjoyment. I'll preface this by saying that I feel like the idea of pleasure and enjoyment is so vilified within Christianity in, in some sense, especially the word pleasure because it can have multiple shades of meaning. But of course, it's a biblical concept. David even talked about in the Psalms how at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And of course, in, in many cases, the, the pleasure being spoken of in scripture is a spiritual pleasure. But that can leave some of us scratching our heads and thinking, oh dear, does that mean I should just you know, hole up in my room and read my Bible 24 seven. And that's, and that I ought to just expect to get lots of spiritual pleasure and sort of a mystical sense. And that's it. What about sitting on my front porch and enjoying a sunset or having a nice tall glass of juice or picking vegetables from the garden and enjoying the smell of it or going on a road trip with my family to go see my long lost cousins or climbing a mountain. Are, are these kinds of wholesome pleasures, are they okay for Christians? Guys, I am not talking about like, like the stuff that Christians would generally be like, yeah, I'm not talking about going to a strip club, not that kind of pleasure, okay? I am not talking about binging TV shows all week long while you pork out on junk food. That is not the kind of enjoyment we're talking about. I'm talking about stuff that is generally accepted as wholesome Christian recreational activities. Are those okay for the Christian? Well, I was thinking about this this week because I had an opportunity to provide enjoyment to our baby girl. Those of you who've been watching for a while, you know I get lots of illustrations from family life. I'm a new mom, newish. Our first child is seven months old now. And she's really, over the last couple of months, she's just really been interacting with the world and like, wow, her brain is just like blowing up with all kinds of neural connections. I don't know how it happened, but seven months, she went seven months without ever having encountering balloons. And I think we, we did a lot of grocery pickups, so we weren't going into the grocery store very often. And then the store that we do go into doesn't have one of those areas that sell balloons. And so I don't know how it happened, but for seven months, she's not encountered balloons until this past weekend. And uh, we were in a regular grocery store and we passed that little florist, the little area where there's like the flowers and the balloons, and they usually have a few balloons up already. And my little seven month old daughter, she was just like, wow, balloons. I mean, she's not speaking yet, but that's what her facial expressions were saying. It was just incredible. And we pulled one for her to look at it. She was just like, ah, it floats, it floats. And just really, really excited about it. My husband and I, we just kind of looked at each other and we're like, let's get her a balloon. And we picked out a red balloon. It was one of those like metallic ones and it was in the shape of a star and it was bright red. 
and we got it, we put it in her hand and of course secured it so it didn't float away and we just went through the rest of the store and the whole time she was looking up at her balloon. I have a balloon. And my husband and I, we were just cracking up the whole time we were in the grocery store because it, it just gave us so much delight to see her enjoying what we were giving to her. And like, we were just having so much fun and laughing and giggling. Like the other customers in the store started laughing with us to watch our apparent like delight as, as new, a new mommy and new daddy. And it was just a great time having fun giving her a red balloon. And I came home and I thought about that and I was just like, you know, how is it that I could be kinder than God? Like as much enjoyment as I was getting out of seeing her enjoying herself, that is not a human thing. Like, like any, that's any love that we would show to our, our children or our family members, like that is a reflection of the love that God has for us. And the love that God has for us is infinitely greater and, and purer than any love that I could have for my daughter. So it made me think of the passage in Matthew chapter seven, verses seven through 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So I definitely can identify with the adjective being used. It says, if you then, being evil, I know I am definitely not a perfect human being. I have all kinds of evil propensities. I'm very much a faulty and flawed human being. And yet I, I just had such a great time giving a red balloon to my daughter and it just made me so happy to do it. God is so much more kind and generous and good and wonderful than that. Like there's like an infinite gap between me and his transcendent love. And so I, I just kind of use that as an illustration. Like if humans can do that, and I know that you who are watching this, I know that you have taken delight in showing love to your family members, whether you have children of your own or maybe your close friends or your parents or your siblings, you have shown love to them and you have just relished doing it. You've enjoyed doing it. So maybe the next time that you are sitting on your front porch watching a sunset and not doing, not having your mind reined up to some high pitch of religious fervor, you're not out helping anybody, you're not cutting the neighbor's lawn, you're not, you know, doing some charitable witnessing acts of service of, for the world. You're just sitting on your front porch enjoying the sunset. Try to enjoy that because it's a gift from God. He knows how to good give good. He knows how to give good gifts, and he wants you to enjoy that. Imagine if I would have just excitedly brought my red balloon to give to my daughter, and imagine if she would have intentionally looked up at that red balloon and started crying, and then just released it into the sky. I would have been like, "What? You don't want it? You don't like it? That's so sad. Mommy brought it for you. I wanted you to have fun with it." I would be a little bit like, obviously, of course she's little, she doesn't know what she's doing and you know, it would be fine. But the point being is that like, I give something to her because I want her to enjoy it. And that's how God is with us also. Like he wants us to enjoy things. And yeah, I'm just saying this as, as some encouragement for you. If you struggle with just being able to relax and legitimately enjoy yourself, I hope that something we've talked about today will help you do that to just enjoy the good gifts that God is wanting to give to you. So may God bless you as you seek to rest in him and I will see you back next week.